one city, a seething cauldron of extremes, a place where the very rich, the very powerful come daily to multiply their wealth, to increase their power. They come swiftly by train, hurtled by the slums, oblivious to the cancer consuming the city below, blind to its violence, its hate, its terror. But what if tomorrow or the next day, the city with all its violence and terror invaded the train? Trust a woman who sleeps in her jewelry. My God, the train. So catch the next one. It's still early. Early. You big jerk. Where did I find you? find me. I found you. Picked you up at Bloomingdale's. Sweetie, I have never been picked up in my life. Dull afternoons, I draw a wild card. I look like I've been mugged in the subway. Yo, don't fuss, pussycat. Nobody will notice. You don't know my husband. I don't think you'd like to. So long. What's your face? That ought to cover it. Frankie, how are the headaches? Ninety million dollars, Harry. You blew ninety million dollars. Well, not all. Fourteen months behind schedule. And by 1979, we are going to have to price the Crystal II ten percent higher than a comparable IBM system, right? Right? Right. You forgot the dessert, Hal. He wants another $90 million to finish. Well, I... There is nothing well about it. This company has made commitments out there. Customers, stockholders. Well, what is done is done. And I have to take the responsibility. Tony, I want you to bring all the important files on the train tonight. We've got work to do. Don't look so unhappy, Harry. If we're smart, the government will eat our loss. And if we're smarter, we'll take the good part of Harry's work, like those cryatic circuits, and fold them right into our current systems. That'll keep our customers happy for the moment, and it'll give us time to breathe. And Harry, I am uh, leaving you in charge of the uh, task force that is going to carry out that operation. That, that's a good idea, Hal. That's a fantastic I'll, idea. I'll try, Hal. No, you won't, Harry. You'll do it. Because if you don't, you'll find yourself walking around on Madison Avenue out there with a uh, cool breeze blowing where your scalp used to be.
have an answer, I think, to the uh, riddle you posed me last evening. Oh? Yes, I think I'd uh, convert to Swiss francs before shipment. Use a Luxembourg corporation. You isolate your risk, and with uh, inflation, you might even pick up a few points any time after 90 days. If Luxembourg will let us go through a Swiss bank. Uh, with Swiss banks, things can usually be arranged. I'll talk to Stevenson on the train. gonna hurt you. Hold still. I, I, I didn't see you. I won't look at you. I don't know your face. Oh, you're pretty smart, huh? Okay, now give them to me. Uh, money I don't carry in this neighborhood. I got maybe a dollar. Come on, you know what I'm talking about. Give me them diamonds. Diamonds? What'd I do with diamonds? Oh, you old geezers got diamonds. Everybody knows that. What are you doing? Hey, hey, hey. hey. Oh, please. The coat belongs to my father and his father. It's about time you got a new one in. I got it. Oh, boy, big ones, I bet. Big ones. Candy. Should have killed him. Countess? See? Rick Apollo is here. Who? Rick Apollo, the artist for the Secret Self campaign. Ah, va bene, va bene. Hey, how are you? Ooh. You smell like an old Australian prostitute. Australian? Well, show me. She's a dreaming about the cow she has to milk, huh? Oh, come on, Hetty. I ask you for a sexy picture of the sexiest girl in the world, and you give to me the singing nun. We are selling not perfume. We are selling romance to grocery checkers that do not have any. They wear secret self. They will look like a Mary Ellen and pick up a new boyfriend every night. That is what this picture wants to say. This picture says they're all going to die, old maids. Rick, Rick, out, out. Try again, eh? Huh? Evelyn, quickly, please. I have to catch my train. What happened? Her mother said she fell off the roof. How did she get a knife wound falling off a roof? Her mother didn't say. When can we get an OR? Take her into emergency. Dr. Cruikshank, I have to have her name and welfare number. Well, that front office of yours would demand a down payment from a corpse. You tell Marshal I'll guarantee your bill, all right? Dr. Cruikshank, I... Doctor, you've already missed the board of directors meeting, and now you're about to miss the train. To hell with the train. Hold it. I'll bring the car around. Hey, where you been? I've been working. Where you been? Working? Give me your autograph, Wendell. Can you want to say, please? Besides, I gave you four autographs this week. How much you sell them for? Fifty cent? Get a dollar for Walt Fraser's? Fifty cent? Well, if you don't raise my prices, I ain't gonna give you no more octographs. Oh, come on, Wendell. I've been waiting here all day. Oh, man. Give me that. What happened after the Boston game? I had a bad night, shorty. Hey, 
Wendell. Yeah, I'm coming, Joy. See you later, Shoy. Jake. You stay cool, shorty. Okay. Well, that little cat is something else. Evening, Wendell. Mr. Hartford, Joe, how are you both this evening? Hey, Big Daddy, what's happening? Well, you've got it the same old stuff, you know. <laughs> run, run. Bounce, bounce, shoot, shoot. Hey, Mr. Hartford, what happened to that, uh, that big black limousine you always picked us up in? Well, as they say, it got ripped off down in the office garage. They found it out on Buckner Boulevard. No engine, no wheels, no seats. A shell of its former self. Well, you got to get it when you can. Eh, it's a living. <laughs> Yes, Mr. Gardner. Yes, sir. <laughs> it sure must be a big celebration. <laughs> yes, sir. Right away. Uh, thank you. Hey, Eddie, what are you doing? What am I doing? What you told me to do? Come here. I got a big delivery for you. I got a big delivery for you, Charlie. What is it? Grab a cart and haul this over to Grand Central. Track 38. The train's the 522 Express for Croton, the club car. This case of wine's for a Mr. Harlan Jack Gardner. You ask the conductor, he'll tell you where Mr. Gardner will be. And before you leave it, you get a check from Mr. Gardner. Understand? You get a check first, and then you leave the wine. What's the big deal? Here's the big deal. This is the bill you're going to collect from Mr. Gardner. Yeah, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> $1,200? $1,200 for a case of wine? What's it made out of? The bishop's blood? What can I tell you? Inflation. Eee. What's... Jersey, and I was just wondering if you're, you're on like... the wrong station. No, 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 I was testing you. Hey, I live in Connecticut. How would you like to have your head wrapped around a pole? You are just like my son! In fact, you are my son. Oh, yeah, uh, Mr. Mr. I, I lost my community ticket over here. Mr. Hartman, how are you? How are you? Thank you. at all. You're only 45 minutes late. Must not have been having a good time. Or did your taxi cab get stuck in the traffic? Andy? Mr. Stevenson? Hey, where do you think you're going? I've got a delivery here for Mr. Gardner. Yeah, why? Your business, why? You got Mr. Gardner here, ain't you? You wise guy. You want to get rousted? I was expecting it. Charlie's in you. You, Mr. Gardner? Yes. You got a check? Bring that on inside. I have a check for you. It's all right, Andy.
Almost missed the train. Here's rush hour. Got a bill for me? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure, right here. Got a check? Yeah, that's right. That's right. That is perfect, Mr. Gardner. <clears throat> here. Oh, really? Oh, thank you, Mr. Gardner. Uh, where do you want this? Oh, would you put it on top of the bar? Got it. A man named Harry Lawrence, 36th Street. George, have a tomato juice, please. straight. You're not trying. All right, watch. Seven, behind the back, in the corner for a beer. You didn't drink the one I bought you yet. Well, you keep setting them up, I'll keep drinking them, all right? I'll pay attention. Here we go. Watch how I do it. Come on, Come on. Baby. I was trying to show him how to shoot. Hey, Frankie, forget the game. Hey, Emil, I found it. Watch you kill Them. I seen them with my own eyes. The ones with all the money, the ones who are going to make us rich. forgot about this place. Boy, just like old times, eh, you guys? Hey. Oh, I thought this one was bigger than this. Hey, then this one used to be bigger than this, Frankie. Hey, it's a dump. It always was a dump. It's a worse dump now, just like home. <sighs> Look what I found. <laughs> <laughs> Emil's in love again. Come on, man, you gotta get us all dirty. Get up from here. Let's get this stuff and get out of here. You know where they are. Go get them. Hey, Emil, remember them guys? Yeah, sure. The ones I can read. Barvetch, Cristiano, they're dead. Carmine's in a can. Hey, Carmine's getting out. Yeah, if you don't sell the warden nothing. Look at that Tony, Vietnam. Mickey, yeah, he's gone. Ooh, Catoose, car wreck. He's doing eight to ten. He ain't never gonna see the light of day. Maro. There's a tree of us left now, Emil. Yeah, Eddie. Boy, we were the best of Eddie. Hey. Nobody ever beat the serpents. Oh, that motorcycle gang from Red Hawk <laughs> didn't do us no good, I can tell you that. E. Hey, Eddie. When we hit the train, right? Yeah. 
We all gonna have new Sunday suits and all that haircuts. You better believe it, babe. I cased the whole thing. Beautiful. We're gonna look like it was born on Long Island. Blue suits, haircuts, <laughs> silver spoons in our mouth, the works. Right, Frankie? Class, that's a ticket. All right, come on, come on, come and get him. Here they are. Keys to the kingdom. Come on. <laughs> Remember when I wrapped them? Oh, there it is. Mm. Watch that. Oh, hey, Frank, man. You still a minister of war? Yeah. Yeah, there's some things you never stop being. It's rough, Jack. I know it is. It's rough on me as it is on you. I doubt that. What am I supposed to do, man? Better, what are you supposed to do? That Senate committee is going to call you on the carpet about the mess in Peru, and I cannot let this bank be involved. It already is. Jack, not by a country mile. You are involved in your capacity as a military officer. Retired. You guys never retire. I wish to hell you would. This bank and these stockholders are not going to be involved in your shenanigans with some South American generals. Very powerful, very influential. So was the Tsar, and look what it got him. Ace. I've handled these ignorant hacks from the Senate and from Congress for 30 years, from the Pentagon and from the bank. Believe me, you give them the right mixture of sweet and sour sauce and they'll line up and march straight. And in this particular case, freedom is at stake. Now, that may not mean much to a banker, but it means everything to me. I'm not going to resign. You're going to have to fire me, old buddy, on the front page of the New York Times and explain to the State Department why you did. So be it, General Gardner. Vacate your office by five, please. Stewart will be in touch about your contract settlement. Good day. Carfare. Frankie, Frankie, what are you doing? Hi. Can I help you, sir? Right. Listen, uh, what's uh, what's on sale over there? All right, sweetheart, just get back. Go on, go on, get back. Get your hand off that. Get. Don't worry, darling. I didn't hurt him. I just scared him a bit. Pretty dumb dog you got there. Hope he didn't cost you too much money. Some people sure get excited, you know? She acted like it was her money. You know what? 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 This is just like the subway, only different. Wait until you see that private car, man. Where do you smell it? What's it smell like? What's it smell like? It smells like perfume, like booze, like dollar cigars, like money. You know what I'm going to do when I get down to Florida? I'm going to walk in one of them bars like Sinatra, and I'm going to order to be the world, man. Every broad in sight. How about the dog trap? Come on. Oh, my darling. I am so sad for you. How could they do this? So sudden, so final. Four more days. It's all the time we need to defeat the nationalization bill. You know who's behind this, don't you? Who? I fought them every way I know how. I didn't know they wore tailored suits and controlled the business of this nation. I'm desolate, Hetty, desolate. Jack, we have a drink and we talk. Draw. Why do we bother with the cards? Why don't I just give you the money and relax at the bar? Can't go to the bar while I'm hot. Besides, Joe, you enjoy losing. Draw again. <laughs> Again, again. Oh, Lord, yeah. I'm just yeah. a poor kid from the ghetto. <laughs> well, hello, my dear. Hello, Whit. Lovelier than ever. Oh, thank you. Larry isn't here yet, huh? Why well, look for him? So, what um, scandalous adventure did you have today? 
a motor scooter patrolman in Central Park? An overwrought Hare Krishna disciple with his head shaved? Well, I'll tell you all about it. Let me get a drink first. If you ever tell anybody, I'll choke you. Hi, Larry. You want a drink? Certainly, my dear. Terrific. Boy! All aboard! Uh, hello, Andy. Hi, How are you? Oh, oh, talk to me later about that scholarship for Billy. Yes, sir, Mr. Rogers. You gotta stop being so generous. Did you ever meet Andy's yeah, boy, yeah, Billy? Yeah. Hello, hello, Jerry. Oh, he's a fine athlete. Fine. Yeah, he's gonna make somebody a good guard. Board! All aboard! This is what I've been dreaming about. I can see myself at the dog track already. I'm gonna spend a lot of time at the dog track in Florida. I always did like dogs. My mother, God rest her soul, she never did let me have one. Frankie? Hey, Frankie? Yeah, Your uncle, who's the bookie in the dog track? Yeah. Does he know any dogs? Oh, yeah, man, he knows them all personal. You want the autographs, I'll get you all the autographs you want. Yeah. Hey, will you? What? King of that? Forty. All right, I'll see that. Okay, gentlemen. Down and dirty. Yeah, Mr. Weaver, you don't send my kids through college yet. Well, we gotta stick together, Joe. Your bet. Oh, yes, that is uh, stunning, Matthew. Just stunning. Yes, well, it was quite an auction. Uh, Halverson, that uh, aerospace fellow from California. Yes, he's a very good customer of mine. Really? Well, we got into quite a horse race. He bid me up 50,000 more than I expected I'd have to go. But uh, you beat him. Well, I guess aerospace isn't that hot these days. <laughs> Mia? But please be very, very careful. Beautiful. What um, did you finally pay? One hundred and sixty-five thousand. I'll raise you forty. Well, I will see that and raise you forty more. Why are you guys in or out? Feeny. I'm out. George? What, hold it, wait. Sir, I have here a hand that will simply astound you, but will not win. You. <laughs> you got it. you. Oh, Wendell. <laughs> I uh, was just doing a sketch of George while he works. Brothers. Somebody's got to win this hand. He's one of my favorite subjects. Jerry, that is one of us. Say nothing. You just stand back, you cover everybody, and make sure you keep those safeties on. We don't want no murder rats. Yeah. Unless you have to. Then. No have to. No have to, Emil. Hey, you hurt one of these dudes. It ain't like killing one of those guys in your mug at a park, Frankie. This is big time. I was born big time, Cario. Terrific job you dedicated to this place. It was open before. 
What do we do? If you go home, stand back. Cassidy, I'm the Sundance Kid, and that's my buddy Uncle Bert Hubbard. Think you make him nervous, he's gonna start twitching and blow your head off. Am I getting through to you? All right, we're gonna start this little number with everybody sitting down. Okay, move. No. Mariella, we best do as he says. Louis, if this is another one of your advertising gizmos, I could never have dreamed this up, but I kind of wish I had. Someone, call the conductor. I kind of lost your attention there for a second, huh? All right. Okay, folks, we ain't no amateurs, huh? We spent a lot of time casing this little lumber out real close. Lady, there ain't gonna be no conductor. He don't come in this car now. We all know that. So we got a cool 45-minute ride together. We can all get real chummy, show pictures of the kids. Talk about the country club. So everybody sit down and get your hands on the table. Down! Get up! Down. Hey, you too, Tiny. That means you. Put it down. Hey, Butch. <laughs> we got a joke. Okay, Joker. What's your name? Hey, son ass, who cares? I care. Got some kind of hero. I want to know who he is before I kill him. Oh, Young come man. on, you Mary stop. Ellen. Mary Ellen. Good looking twist. Engelbert, that's for you. Don't say I never gave you nothing. Yeah? Gee, thanks, Frank. Sundance. Uh, uh, we don't want to know your names. He's Sundance, you're Engelbert Humperdinck. That's fine. That's right. All right, what's your name? Play ball. Dudley Matthew Stevenson. Yeah, Dudley, and what do you do? I mean, for a living. I manage the Lewiston Foundation. Yeah, what's that? What kind of business is that? Well, it's uh, not a business, exactly. I, uh, I give money away, you might say. To anybody? Certainly not. To worthy causes, medical research, ballet companies. Wait, wait, wait. You give money away to ballet company? Bunch of lightweights flitting around? Bunch of lightweights flitting around gets free money, and I ain't got none. But you're right, we come to the right place. <laughs> OK, OK, let's hit it. You can sit down, Dudley, unless you want your brains in the ceiling. Sit down, Dudley. There you go. All right, let's all be generous as my buddy Butch passes among you. Ah! Oh, Dudley. Dudley. Nobody gonna mug you, huh, Dud? I was looking forward to cutting your eyes out. Ooh, look at a temple on his tongue. It's tough being a hero, Dud. You feel foggy, leap. Okay, show's over. Let's get on with it, people. Money, watches, bracelets, rings. The whole piece of pizza. Come on, move. Oh! Have your fares ready? How are we doing? Nothing. 
Laddie, don't they lie? Where are you going? I'm going to sit with my wife, sir. Any objections? Yeah, sit down. I'm afraid I can't do that. Larry! It don't make no difference. Uh, he just wants to hold her hand. She's all upset. Well, she shouldn't ought to be. I'll take care of you, lady. Okay, go on. Larry, how did these animals get on the train? Does that matter? Come on, Grandpa, you're next. Let's go, let's go. We ain't got time, old thing. Yeah, I want to look at your dirty pictures. The ring. My wedding ring? You were married long enough. Come on, I'll watch everything. Empty your pockets. This belonged to my father. It's antique, then. It's older. It's better. Uh, okay, girl, you're next. This is all I have. Come on. No! Let him have it, Mary Ellen. Let him have it. There's nothing in there. What do we have here? Get a whip of these. I warn you, sir. I warn you, sir. Sit down. Hey, Emil, start walking up with these. My God, man, have you no decency? No. We couldn't afford it. What is this? Give me that. Yeah. It's a key to the 8th Avenue Hotel. You're kid. No. Hey, is this the kind of place you take the old lady to? What, are you some kind of weird old cheapskate? Larry, I can explain. Honestly, I can. I'm sure you can explain, but I don't know what you would know about honesty. Stones are easy to throw, hard to take back. Oh, give us a break, will ya? Shut up! Okay, Lollipop, put it in. Let's go, Baldy. Cop it up. Come on! I'm afraid you've reached another uh, dry hole with me, young man. That's all there is. Twelve bucks, you're gonna have a dry hole in your head. Come on, where's your bread? That's all there is. Now, wait a minute. I do have some change, I think. Here. Get out of here. Listen, what is this garbage? Twelve dollars in change of frisky. Get up! Off! Off! All right! Uh, credit cards. Yeah. Pants. What do you mean, pants? Take them off! There's nothing in my pants. I just... Either your pants or your head comes off. I don't care which. Do it, Rogers. Well, it's a, uh, little bit like a... Fraternity initiation, isn't it? I'll initiate you. You don't come up with the dough. I told you I don't have any money. I don't carry any large amounts of money. I never have. I have no need to. Come on. How do you get around? You got to eat, right? The credit cards. Grab them credit cards. We'll leave them off as a brocket. All right. All right, so he's got credit cards. It's still Friday, right? What do you mean by that? It's Friday. Payday, Friday. You get paid by checks. Don't you don't you care if you check? Just a minute, please. I, I don't think you understand, uh, Mr. Sundance. We don't get paid. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You guys work for nothing, right? Huh? I didn't say we work for nothing. Of course we get money, but we don't see a check ever. It doesn't come to us. We have a, a, uh, an accountant, I, I'm an accountant to a, a business manager, and he, he pays our bills for us. He gives our wife an allowance, and uh, he gave me... $40 for uh, taxi fares. That $12 is what I've got left. Now, may I put my pants on, please? No! All right, it's here someplace, man. I don't believe you. I know it. That jacket is worth $500. You may want to sell it. You think we're doing all this just to steal clothes? Where's your money? I gave you all that I have, and that's the truth. Dudley! Dudley, listen. Where do you keep your money? Never mind, I know. The birdcage in Central Park. The U.S. Treasury. <laughs> so funny, Dud. Most of us keep more of our money than we care to in the U.S. Treasury. What, what are you talking about? Income tax. Weirdos. You're all weirdos. Hey! 
Uh, Sundance? Dougley just reached for something under his seat. Down, get down. Down! Oh, Dudley. You don't give up, do you? I'm beginning to like your style. What is that? What's in there? Ah, uh, it's a fiddle. I've seen it before. i never seen one of them again. It'll be too soon for me. Right. More than one thing could go in a fiddle case, Eddie. Let me see it. Open. It's only my son's violin. I had it repaired today. Yeah, terrific. Let me see. Bad. Yes, it's of no value to anyone except my son. Yeah, huh? Well, there's nothing there. There's nothing to lose, right? Well, uh, he'd miss it. You'll miss your watch. What do you think? You think we'd get something for this? Yeah, about five bucks. Boys, you're getting in over your heads. Boys? I'll give you boys. This is something special, ain't it, huh? This is worth something, right? That is a... Jerry. Sundance. Eddie. What's this? What's an Eddie? Your friend here, I just heard you call him Eddie. Fellas, let me tell you something. What you're holding right now is price. Go on, go on. That is a Stradivarius violin, made in Italy around 1735, and there are no more than a hundred like it on Earth. Yeah, Stradivarius, that's a lot of dough. Yeah. <laughs> okay, what's it worth? One hundred and sixty-five thousand dollars. A hundred and sixty-five thousand dollars? Hey, let me see that. I just want to see the violin. Down. Hey, down. Hey, Matthew, I got a great deal for you. I got 800 acres of swampland in Florida I want to talk to you about. A hundred? Wow, that's a lot of pizza, I gotta tell you. <laughs> hey, take it easy with that, come on. Right. You used to play one of these, didn't you? Give us two. All right, gentlemen. I think your team just lost the game. You put that knife down and you sit back real slow. Don't do it, Weaver. I'm talking to your head, baby. You take it and put it down slow and sit back. Wendell, do it. Wendell, put it down. Hold on, Wendell. I've got him. Yeah, Matt. You got him. All right, now. Drop your guns. Both of you. <laughs> Take all, Engelbert. Dudley's on an ego trip. And he's cool, babe. Take that fiddle, hold it out to its side. A little more. Now, jerks. No! No, 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 no. I just bought that this morning. For God's sake, Stevenson, don't bargain with these bums. Shoot them. Eddie, you hand Eddie that gun nice and easy. We've got the world's most expensive box of toothpicks. OK, girls, here it goes. Stevenson has disgust. Lousy fiddle. No, I understand why Matt did what he did. The Stradivarius is Western civilization. Man's hope. Dreams of being better than he is. You ain't kidding, baby. Because with what we get out of that violin, we're going to be a lot better off than we was. Listen, learn something and listen to the man. I'm the man. 
This makes me the man. And don't you forget it. Hey, hey, hey. You know what that is? The jerk, what's the now? No, man, that's Wendell Weaver. Weaver. All stop back court. Is that right? What do you think? What happened in the Boston game? I dropped 10 months. Had a bad night. Hey, Frankie, get his autograph. It's kind of like having a pet wolf. You don't know whether to kiss it or kill it. You kiss him, honey. Just give me the gun. What gun? There is no gun. Listen, don't take any heat off these fish. They give you any problems, just bust them in the mouth. She's been good. It looks like you and me are the only two men in this car, Wendell. Will you back me when I make my play? You know, you are really something, General. And we ride this train together for, what, a year and a half? And you have never really talked to me. And now, all of a sudden, I'm going to back your play. The situation has changed. you got to realize that. Oh, I realize that. That someone else is getting this from the cookie jar, right? Well, relax, man. It won't hurt that much. You can take these lousy punks, you and me. We've got to. Otherwise, it's over. Don't be ridiculous. Card stuck. Deal you in? Cut the gas, Chester. I took all your bread. What are you playing with? Chips. Wait a minute. You got chips, you got a banker, you got a banker, you got money. Who's holding? Nobody's holding out on you. We pay off with bank checks. Is that like payday? Or you give them the paper and they give you money? Righto. Now, who's in? Then uh, you could all uh, give us some of that paper? Checks? But of course. Sure, Engelbert. Sure. Oh, wait. Well, we want some. <laughs> Certainly. I can't imagine why I shouldn't give you a check. How much would you like? Huh? Uh, a hundred dollars. A piece. Tell you what. Why don't I make it a thousand? Thousand dollars. Larry. Why don't you make it ten thousand while you're at it? Will you ante up the other nine? I'm a little short this month. You jerk! The people really think you're something, don't you? Huh? Come on, you come on, babe. They're giving you a hard time. Oh, come. You can't go waltzing in a bank with a hot check in you. And they was making fun of me? Yeah. Because they're scared. They're scared because you got the guns, but you keep forgetting that. No. They ain't gonna. No more. Hey, you! You! You trying to make me into a meatball? Cool, cool, man. You don't want to hurt anybody. Oh, yes, I do. No, no, Emil, Emil. Uh, Engelbert, whatever. Listen, these, these arrogant fools here don't know baby food from baby pants. Believe me. I know that you're good and mad and you have a right to be. Right. Right, because you've been stepped on by schools and bosses and, and cops ever since you could walk, right? Yeah. Why don't you put away your textbook Freud, doctor? I think I know a little bit more about this than you do, Larry. I work with people like this every day. More fool you. Hey, you don't know nothing, man. Yeah. You don't understand. You sit down. You sit up there in your castles with your gold spoons. You don't understand anything yeah, about right. it. All right, all right, all right. Go on, go on, go on. Sit down. Sounds like the welfare board. Emil, go back and sit with Miss Subways. You, bright eyes up. Go on. OK, Snow White, up. You, bright eyes up, out. Come on. Nobody else has the guts to say it. You know where you can go, punk. I said, get lost, punk. For me, you got nothing more. You got a name, sweetheart? General. General what? General nuisance? <laughs> General Harlan Jack Gardner. Oh, oh, right, OK. Joey. You don't move, Joe. He can't do anything. He's talking for your beard, Joey. Up. Come on, man. They're not crazy enough to kill any one of us. 
We hang tough, they'll crumble. E, E, there ain't nothing stupider than making my friend here mad. I seen him cut a man's ears off. Well, for a bet. Oh, oh, please, please. Be a man. Oh. Can it? Sick of your ten hero act. It's no privilege to live this life on Earth with gutless wonders like you. He just enjoys sunrises, gentlemen. Cowards always You're do. a creep. You are nothing. You guys are nothing without a bunch of soldiers dumb enough to go out and die when you tell them to, General. There may be a way to con these characters, Jack, but marching up to them like a line of redcoats is not my idea of it. Good move, Joey Baby. Colonel, keep an eye on these guys. Huh? Let's keep looking right straight ahead, sweetheart. Okay, Napoleon, it's your move. You're a gutless little twerp, Frankie. Kick your tail around the block right in our wheelchair. You got a big mouth. And she's gonna get all cut up on count of you. And she's what, a, uh, a friend of yours, huh? Jackie, you must have... There's a clean way. A way that solves the problem. Jack. Do what I can for Peru. Jeff Pops, and meet me in front of a saloon, huh? Hope it didn't hurt you. Is there a mark? No. Hey, I do good work. Well, I thought I did. <laughs> Beautiful. I thought we was watching, watching you real close. I'm with you. That's it, right? Yeah, ten more minutes, we are off the train into the car. Piece of cake, babe, piece of cake. <sighs> yes, sir? Uh, give me a beer. Give me a beer and a shot of rye. Beer and a shot of rye. Hey, give me a beer, too. Two beers and a shot of rye. Come on, Dutch. Good enough to drink. Come on. That'll be five dollars, sir. But, but, hey, babe, it's a robbery. Ain't you been listening? Yes, son, I've been listening for 40 years. And I ain't heard a good joke yet. Five dollars. I got a gun. And I got a mortgage. Hey, see, son, them people out there, just between you and me, they can afford to be robbed. Poor George, he's just a poor working man, like you. I can't afford it. Five dollars. But I can kill you. Hmm. Then I wouldn't have to pour no more drinks for people who really don't need no more drinks. Of course, I might not like that darkness, but I can find my way in the dark. Call you, George. George. Confidentially, between you and me, I have never seen a bigger collection of fruit cakes in my entire life. Get the chance. Thank you, sir. Uh, George. Yes, Mr. Lewis. Now put that on my tab, will you? Sir, Mr. Lewis. Would you like another drink, sir? Oh, babe, I'm cool. What about here? It's right there. Where? There, you got it. So, Ma salut. Hi. Hi. Aren't you hot in that old mask? A little bit. Then why don't you take it off? A 
was hot. I thought you'd be more comfortable. Emil! What'd you do that for? What did you do that for? Emil, just freaks. Emil, what'd you do that for? What? Why did you call him? Wait, what'd you do she that for? She told me to. That was not a smart idea, lady. Stupid idiot! So it you was not a smart idea. Oh. Eddie, you know what this means? Do you dig it? No, I don't dig it. What does it mean? We let one of these people off the train alive, man. It's back in a slammer. Emil, you're gonna have to use them guns, babe. No, no, yeah. Emil, no. What is it? No. Hey. You want to take a trip back in the slammer? You take it. I ain't going there. Hey, this ain't time we're talking about. This is a chair, Wanky. We bump into these people, we're gonna fry, and that ain't my idea of a vacation. You may have to, Eduardo. You may have to. I don't know. Emil, Emil, watch hard. You keep your eyes on those people. We gotta talk. I gotta think. Maron, you have to bring him along, you stupid old fuck. Hey, he's a friend. I'm sick of you guys calling me stupid. It's okay, man. It's okay. This ain't going right. No, no, Same what I thought it was going to be like at all. All right, all right, all right. Okay, who's your buddy? Who's your buddy? Huh? Yeah, you. Okay, I look out for you, right? Yeah. Okay, that's going to be all right. You're just going to have to use them guns, babe. That's all. Her too? Frankie, you're giving to me. I don't know, babe. I don't know. Don't look good. Just keep your eye on. It was not a smart idea. Get away from the window! Do you know what he looked like? Just an educated guess. Emil! See that? like you was real. You got beautiful hair. Thank you. If, uh, if he, Frankie, told you to kill somebody, you wouldn't do it, would you? Frankie says crazy things sometimes. So, if he told me to do something, I gotta think about it. But if Frankie and Eddie told me, then I gotta do it. Why should you kill someone? Just because they said to. I already did. A long time ago. I don't remember what they said I did. So I guess I did. they're going to do. Look at their options. To them, they don't have a choice. We stand between them and their freedom. If we want to live, we've got to find some other choice for them. One they don't think they've got. Everybody, babe, I'm sorry, everybody! 
Come on. Frankie, listen to me a minute, will you? Move! Frankie, listen to me. You have a problem. You understand? A very big problem. You're the one with the problem. You're already dead, I hate to say it. Hey, Frankie, shut up a minute. Listen, if we're dead, you're dead. Don't you understand that? If you kill us, even one of us, they'll get you. They'll hound you to hell and back. But it doesn't have to be that way. Oh, stop whining. How come it doesn't? How come? Why are you here? Why are you doing this? Money, right? That's right. You couldn't make it on the outside, so you're going to take it from us, right? You're going to make it this way? That's right. If I had a couple of million of your dollars, we won't be here in the first place. Not me! I'm glad I'm here, because you're scum! Will you shut up a minute, Frankie? I gotta think. That's right, Eddie, you think. And listen to me. I run a big company, Eddie. I hire people all year long. Jobs, I will give you jobs, all three of you. Good jobs, I'll guarantee it. The best pay, pensions, holidays, the works. And then nobody has to die. And nobody has to go to jail. And then the problem disappears for all of us. I ain't trained for night. You know, none of us are. I didn't graduate high school even. Eddie, hey, we'll train you. We train more people than Harvard University does every year. We'll train you if you want to be trained. Emil kind of a read. We have a special project working with the federal government for learning problems with the, the mentally deficient. Emil, you want a job? You gotta hire you to be a mental deficit. Yeah, sure. I, I like that, Frankie. <laughs> hey, listen, Emil, will you get off your that trick now? Eddie, what happened, huh? What happened to Florida? What happened to Bookie Parley you were gonna open up, huh? What happened to all them chicks on the beach? Boy, if they had the guns, we'd be dead. We gotta get out of here, and they gotta die. Do that. We get off the train after that. You don't make a cross the top and see bridge. You ain't a smart guy, Frankie. I ain't a smart guy. Gotta stop kidding ourselves, man. We'll lose this, Frankie. Eddie. I don't know about them other two, but it's okay. Uh, you got yourself a deal, mister. Get holes, Eddie. I wanna live, too. No, yeah, you don't. Punk. Punk! You're gonna die. I'm not gonna let you or these other meatheads join Hal Rogers' company and live to regret it one way or the other. What the hell is wrong with you? It's not up to you. Oh, yes, it is. Everybody else cringes and runs. Somebody has to stand up. Well, everything has been taken away from me today. I've got nothing to lose. My life is my weapon, Eddie. That's your name, isn't it? Shoot him. <laughs> Little old wine boy. Eddie. I'm going to take your gun away. I'll give you two choices. You can kill me with it before I do, and that's murder and you'll die. Or you can let me take it out of your hand. In which case, I'm going to shoot you down. You understand? No. Jack, you cannot. Now listen to I me. I can do nothing else. Understand. There's your job. Shoot him. <laughs> I always knew he was a crazy one. Yeah, he's crazy like a fox. You stay back. I'm warning you, mister. Warn and shoot. I would, punk. No, oh, please. No, Jack. Shoot. Stop him. Jack's going to get us all killed. Oh, she's right. Shoot. General no. Gardner, I pray that you do this. Get out of my way, Jerry. I'm going to kill the little swan. If you do, you'll bring down the Holocaust on all of us. Don't you realize that? I realize that a man that cannot stand up for his own freedom is already living his own death. Now, you make any choice you want. You've made a choice you have no right to make. My choice. Get out of my way, Jerry, before I walk over you. <laughs> oh, you get killed on your own time, General. Soon, I don't know. Who stop 
good for? Stop to let you all off with Sing Sing. Is that really it? You kidding? This is it, Frankie. You figure out a hit to take me to the same thing? Oh, it ain't! Hold it, Frankie. And hey, what is this? Yeah. If you get some kind of signal out here, I'll kill you for sure. Well, you guys think we got some kind of a bat radio or something? The train stopped, man. It'll start in a minute. What do you want? They're trying to pull a fastie, huh? It's in the nature of trains to start and stop. I was about to drink on the house. Oh, yeah. Emil! Come in that door, Eddie. Keep an eye on him, Dave. I swear to God, we don't mean to hurt nobody. People are always saying they don't mean to do things. But we all do them, don't we, son? the 522 continue on their golden shuffle, holding their wealth, their power, their cleverness with them as closely as their well-guarded skin. Emil is dead, poor fellow. Frankie, broke in prison like a puppet without strings, sits witlessly by a window, 
watching the trains. Eddie is a messenger boy in a computer room, an acolyte carrying offerings of holy cards to the electronic master. And he dreams at night of golden beaches and tanned thighs and trains. <laughs> 